you faith builders out there. It's Bubbly Brit coming to you from the Faith Factory. Today, we are going to be building our faith and using some tools to do it. All right, so I've got my tools here. I have my saw and I have my tape measure to measure my faith. But I want you to bring the tool along too. It's the most important tool that you could ever have here at the Faith Factory. Does anybody know what it is? It's the Bible. So if you have a Bible at home, I want you to run really fast and go get it and come back because we're going to need it in a few minutes. Okay, faith builders, I need your help. I have a brand new song to teach you. So I need everybody to stand up. Make sure you have plenty of room so you don't hit your brother or sister because we're going to use our arms and our legs and we're going to have fun. All right. The first line is, I can't hold the world in my hands, but I believe in the one who can. I don't know what the future will bring, but I believe you have a plan for me. And even when I can't see, you know that I still believe because I know everything you say is true. I know I can always trust in your never ending love that you're always gonna see me through. I'm gonna walk by faith no matter what comes my way. So keep walking and stand on your promises. Does anybody know what God's promises are? Where you can find them? You can find them in your faith tool. You can find them in the Bible. You are faithful and true, so I will walk by faith. All right, I think you guys got it, so let's do it. All right, here we go, everybody. Let's start walking.
and stand on your promises. You are faithful and true every day, so I will walk by faith. I'm gonna walk by faith, no matter what comes my way, and stand on your promises. You are faithful and true every day, so I will walk by faith. glad that you're here today, Elijah and Jackson. It's good to see you today. And is that Lily over there? I'm glad you're here, Lily. And Kaylee is joining us today. That is awesome. And if I didn't call your name, I'm glad you're here as well. Get out your faith tool because we're going to learn about someone who was a best friend with God. Now, have you ever had a best friend? You have? That's awesome. It's cool to have a best friend. And sometimes your best friend goes to your school with you. How many of you have ever gone on a school trip? Raise your hand. I see you out there. That's awesome. I have too. Where did you go? You? Really? You went to the park? That's awesome. And you? The museum. That's cool. Well, today, a man in the Bible, in the book of Genesis, in your faith tool, that's the very first book of the Bible. We are going to go to Genesis, and we're going to go to chapter 12. And that's the big one, too, and verse 1. And we're going to learn about Abram and how he had a best friend, and he went on a trip, too. It says here in verse 1, Now the Lord said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show you. You all knew where you were going on your trips, but Abram, he didn't know where his best friend God was wanting him to go. You see, he lived in a city that was called the Ur of the Chaldees, and that's kind of a fun thing to say. But God saw that there all everybody around Abram, they didn't make good choices and they really didn't want to be his friend. But Abram did. So he said, Abram, you come out with your family and we're going to go somewhere. And so Abram, look in verse 4, he obeyed. In verse 4 he says, so Abram departed as the Lord had spoken unto him and Lot went with him. And Abram was 75 years old when he departed out of Haran. And so stand up everyone and we're going to march. Get ready for our trip. And so Abram, he is marching and he's obeying God and just trusting God. That's building faith because he knew that God had something better for him. And as he marched with God and all his family was with him, his wife Sarai came and we saw that Lot came and his family. But do you know that Lot and Abram were herdsmen? They had cattle and they had sheep. So they brought people as helpers too to help them take care of their animals. Would you like to be a herdsman today? All right, you be Abraham's helpers and you be Lot's helpers, okay? Keep those cows and those sheep where they need to be, following right after us. And so as Abram walked, then God would talk to him, just like you talk to your best friend. And God told him, he said, Abram, stop. Abram? You need to look and you see all the sand over there? 
I'm going to make your family so many people, Abram, that it's going to be like every one of those little grains of sand. We can't count all the grains of sand. And then when it got to be nighttime, God said, Abram? He said, yes, God. Because see, they talked because they were friends. He said, look up at all the stars in the sky. Have you ever tried to count all the stars in the sky? You start and then you mess up because there's so many. God said, Abram, your family is going to have as many people in your family as these stars in the sky. Abram was like, whoa. And he said, Abram, you're my friend. And so Abram, yeah, was friends with God. And so he and all of his family, they started walking. And Abram trusted God, who was his best friend. Do you know that you can have God as your best friend too? Now, you may not live in a town like Abram, where everybody makes bad choices. But do you know God's got something better for you? God has something so much better just like he had for Abram. God said, you and I can be such good friends that just not God walking by us, but God said, I can come and live in your heart so that whenever that you wake up of a morning and your feet hit the floor, you think of your best friend and you say, morning, God, and you tell him how awesome it is that the sun is shining and it's going to be a great day and you want to spend that day with him. And you ask him to help you because, see, God helped Abram. God's going to help you. And so you say, God, help me to think good thoughts. Help me to look at good things. Help me to listen to good things. Say good things. Do good things with our hands, which means don't hit. And go good places. And God, he will be your friend and he will help you. And how he does that is when you mess up, you say you're sorry. God says, I'll forgive you. See, Abram wasn't perfect. God didn't expect him to be. God doesn't expect us to be perfect. He'll still be our friend even when we mess up. But we just need to say, I'm sorry to whoever we did that to. If we hit our brother or sister, what do you say? I'm sorry. And they say, I forgive you. And then God says, you know what? I'm going to wash that yucky sin out of your heart. How do you do that? We learned that last week. You go baptized in Jesus' name. You go all the way under the water and your sins are washed away. And then God says, you know what? Now I'm going to come live in your heart. And you start thanking him. And then you speak that special heavenly language. And you know that's when God comes in your heart. Then as you begin to walk, let's start walking again. As you walk in that friendship with God, he's very, very close. So close that you talk to him. You can talk to him and tell him anything just like Abram did. And do you know that even though God gave Abram all the land he walked on and gave him a big family that made those choices, do you know that God even had something better? You may say, how could something be better than that? Let me tell you, it is a place called heaven. And heaven is what God has got better for us too. That it is a place that is so awesome. Oh, that must be what Amelia was talking about. She had her crown and her cape. She talked about the kingdom of God. That's heaven. That's the better that we have. God is our friend and walks with us here on the earth while we're here in our houses. And that's a very good friendship. But the better after that, that he comes in our hearts, is to be with him in heaven. And do you know that in heaven, there's nothing to make you scared, nothing to make you sad, nothing that is at all bad. But heaven is full of light and sunshine and wonderful things where we will be happy all the time. We're not going to go there now, but it is something that we need to get ready for. That's why you need to ask Jesus to be your best friend, just like Abram did. So if you haven't asked God to be your best friend, let's do that now because he wants to be your best friend. And how we pray and talk to him is we bow our head, close our eyes, and we just talk. Jesus, we're so glad that you are our best friend and that you can come and when we mess up, you can just wash away our sins 
whenever that we are baptized in your name, that you forgive us and you take all those things away and that you have something so much better for us that as we go through our days, you can help us to make the right choices and that after this, there's heaven, which is so much fun. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.